Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Queen Sugar. This is season three, episode 11. And it was a good episode today. And we also found out that Queen Sugar was renewed for a season four. So, yay, yay, yay. Clap, clap, clap. You know what I'm saying? A little shimmy dance or whatever. Um, I do love the show. I'm very happy that it is getting another season. It is a really good, really, really good TV show. Um, if you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel because usually, if you're here now, you're always here. And if you're always here, go ahead and subscribe, okay? And do not forget to hit the notification bell because it lets you know when I have new videos up. Now, if you've already hit the notification bell, and you're still not getting your notifications, you may have to unclick it and then re-click it. That happens sometimes if you're not getting your notifications. So do not forget to either, you know, go ahead and click it the first time or re-click it the second time to be sure that you're getting your notifications, okay? Um, so this episode... It, it was heavy. It was heavy but not heavy and... It covered a knot, but not a lot. It was real subtle. It was really little stuff here, little stuff there, but it all wound up being a great ending that I think is going to start some beginnings, okay? Let's just say that. We see Darla starts off the episode in her bed. She's waking up in the morning. She's crying, okay? She looks as if she's a little bit of a hyperventilating or whatever because we know she has this whole thing going on with Ralph Angel and Blue. And so she gets up, she's dressed or whatever, her mom's in the kitchen. Her mama is kind of bad news, and I love Michael Michelle. Um, I love Michael Michelle ever since she played Malik Yoba's fiance on New York Undercover back in the day, a long, you know, back, back, back in the day. Um, that, Yes, New York Undercover, Malik Yoba and all these things. Anyway, so the mama there, and she's like, you know what I'm saying, okay. Don't forget to go get the letter from your sponsor, you know what I'm saying? We're going to have to meet with a lawyer to talk about the mediation, how it's work going. We're going to pick out something nice for you to wear. Darla looks like she's about to take a hit from the crack pipe. I mean, she looks like she's just ready to get high. Maybe one more again because there's just so much going on. She looks stressed is what I'm trying to say. Really, really, really stressed. And it's like... She knows what her mom is doing isn't fully right, but she also does not know how to tell her mom, you doing too much, I need you to back up out of it. But you can tell by how she's looking. She's looking stressed because she's like, this is not what I wanted or how I wanted to go about it, but it's already, you know what I'm saying, um, already, uh... <laughs> Someone's sending me messages and I have to check them when I'm done reviewing stuff. Anyway, so <laughs> Lord Jesus, Mary and Joseph. So yeah, she sees just all the bullshit and the rigmarole going on. So she's like, but how can I but you can see she sees it, but she does not know how to stop it. So we see that whole thing. You know, we do see that um Vicky comes to see Charlie at the meal and Vicky usually only see Charlie like on the outskirts like she come she sends her phone calls and text she doesn't really come around much often for like little stuff so she calls to see Charlie in person because she's like oh, girl you know I, I couldn't leave this on your phone I could not text you this I had to come to this in person girl your son like unfortunately Micah has become a person of interest in that fire down at the little plantation thing or whatever she's like what Micah no, it wasn't him. It's impossible. But I'm like Charlie. The kid he been hanging out with got arrested too. So you didn't think to even ask him if he had anything to do with it. But you know what I'm saying? Maybe she did not. And the girl like, are you sure he didn't have nothing to do with it? Like, do you know where he was that night? And she thought she was like, wait a minute. What the, what the fuck was Michael that night? Was he home? Was he not home? I don't know. So we next scene is she goes to Michael's school. So Micah and the other culprits, yes, the culprits, are all together talking. I'm like, they so dumb, okay? This is the thing. When you I hate when my tattoo itches and it just drives me crazy. Anyway, 
if you commit a crime, okay, when you commit a crime, you don't consistently meet with the other culprits in person in public. You don't do that, especially after one culprit in your group got arrested, okay? Oh, yeah, they know y'all think of thieves, okay? You don't do that, but they are new criminal culprits, kids who tried to do something nice. You will say nice, and it turned out really, really bad, okay? And they like, don't worry about it, even though one more cop then came to one of the other kids' house. But again, they ain't find nothing. They ain't find nothing. They didn't find nothing. So they like, hey, Micah, your mama here. And they know his mama don't play. So Micah and Charlie is leaving and walking or whatever. And she look around like, who, who around so I can ch choke this boy out? Now, Micah. Did you have anything to do with this whole thing that went on? Like, you have, was you involved in it in any way? And he like, my bad, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, it was an accident. We were trying to protest for the people, you know what I'm saying? Proud to the people. We were taking a stand. Saying all the things that these other kids that told him the reason as to why they did it. And she like, is you crazy? I, you could go to prison. That is a felon. That is arson. What? I did not raise you to be that way. She's very, very, very upset. She's not not hearing the reason that he did it. She's she's pissed off about the results of what was done. You know what I'm saying? She's a parent. Okay, she's a parent. So he like, I know, I get it. Who are you yelling at, bro? Who, Micah? Look, first of all, my mama would have backhanded me. Okay, a quick look, cross my mouth, hush your mouth up, girl. Don't be yelling at me is what would happen in my house. So when I was that age with my mama, okay. So um, I'm like, but he raised his voice as if he not no longer scared of going to prison or going to jail. When last time he was, it was very, uh, a very um, unfortunate situation, and he seemed scarred from it. But I'm like, maybe not so much. So you know, she like, look. I don't care, right? As of right now, you are no longer hanging out with the kids. They're not your friends no more. Leave them kids alone. Like, do not be around them. You know what I'm saying? I gave you a chance to be in this new school, and you done fucked up the church's money. Okay, literally. So, they're my friends. No, you don't know them anymore. I don't know you. Okay. And then he's like, oh, this is this bullshit. Who are you cussing at? Bomb would have been a second backhand. Don't be cussing at me. Don't you be. I, st I still don't cuss in front of my mom. And I'm 36 years old. Micah, beside, Micah is becoming Tariq. Okay? He is Tariq from power. Uh, he just getting all beside himself and is losing his damn mind. So, but like, well, watch your mouth, boy. Okay? Watch your mouth or whatever. Take your ass home, uh, Micah. Go home. We're going to discuss this late. She turned around and looked, this fool on his phone texting. First of all, I would have sitting out the goddamn phone back and said, goes, sit, sit, sit your little ass down, okay? Sit, sit your little ass down is what I would have done. I was very like Micah. What is, he is a completely different kid. Like, totally, I'm like, he just is too much Jesus. But he said, I'm texting Inova because I'm going to talk to Inova. Oh, you think you run things now? You think you run things now? He's like, no, but I can talk to her because she listens unlike you. Again backhand first of all Charlie, and he walks away and leaves charlie call davis to beat his ass okay call davis to beat his ass call prosper to beat his ass what is it from a cane from a from a seat somewhere else or thing have rock have, have ralph angel come beat his ass hell hollywood hell, not remy nope not remy anyway someone needs to beat some sense into michael's ass like this this a grown man who can say boy you're doing too much okay you're smelling yourself, as my people will say. You're, you're, you're smelling your goddamn self. Sit down somewhere. Anyway, um, he walked on on, and she leaked, because she goes, she's pissed off, too. So, we do, she was going, she sent him home, because she had to go meet with the, with the farmers. She do go meet with the farmers, but they only want to meet with her, because they found out about the prison being built on the Landry land. And they don't know yet that she knows about it already. And she's just like, what? I didn't know that. This pimple on my, I have a whole pimple, y'all. So, y'all see me look. No, it's not like I have a pimple and it's just there. It's so noticeable when I make turn my face sometimes. So, yeah, I have a pimple, whatever. Um, anyway, they know that the prison is being built. But they do not know that she, one, already knows. And that, two, she's technically working with the Landry's in some form of fashion, okay? So, they want her to possibly get it stopped, talk to people to see how they can prevent the prison from being built on the land. Okay, now um, I'm by episode this ep this I'm by seeing this episode was really easy, almost almost like 
I'm not going to say like we didn't need it, but like a, a secondary thought that I feel like is going to probably um, be more about the next episode based on the, the reviews, the the preview for the preview for tomorrow well next week's episode i'm getting all tongue tied um but we do see her she's basically just interviewing with the local radio either the radio or the news news station um about her new pie uh business or whatever it was a great thing she was being with the reporter the reporter tasted some food you know she was able to say this is my my assistant the assistant girl is there but when the reporter just asked her about her you know how she they overcame things or what she's done to get to where she is she played real coy like she did not want to to her lupus i'm like and she said that my heart i tried to had to find enough ovens i said girl you live through a whole bunch of stuff other than them ovens but you know i advise real private life she don't want to buy her business and she doesn't want to feel weak she does not want to feel like she's a super woman who has some kryptonite in her system which is her lupus so she's like i ain't saying shit you ain't seen shit and so hush it up um so that's her whole thing was just her um and she was a great great interview so that's all we've really seen the IFI. Um, we do see Nova a little bit where um, her book editor has tons of notes for her book that she was writing. And when she sees the, the message, she sees, oh, I have, a, I have a couple notes. But she sees it and it's like a whole bunch of notes, okay? Notes, 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 notes. Um, and people know that you, as, a, as a writer, you hate to see a red pen with notes and corrections all over your paper. Um, so she talks to her best friend who we've only seen her best friend like maybe once or twice before. Uh, I think like maybe in season one or two. Was it, it was when she was dating a white man. No, it wasn't. When she was dating that black dude, the, the other, the, the other professor guy. We saw her there. So we have not seen her since. I think that was season two actually. So, um, the note, the friend like, well, yeah, it's a lot of notes. Like she got a lot of stuff on here, but it seems like she wants to hear more about you she wants you to write more about you and not so much about you know your father your brother and your sister because their stuff and their stories and their their life lessons you know sometimes does not tie into what you have going on and how think those things have affected you um so that's the reason she probably has all these notes like people wants to hear from you 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 and she said, well, you know, I got a lot of skeletons in my closet, you know, a lot of mistakes that I've made and things I'm ashamed of. So, you know, I'm just scared to, excuse me, write from that, from that point of reference. And I thought to myself, but you wrote a whole thing on your daddy's private suicidal thoughts. Like he, only your daddy and one other person and probably, well, no, maybe two. I wonder if I, if I knew to pretty sure Pop, Pop told her but you you know spoke about your daddy's secrets and skeletons as far as him you know being suicidal and you know depression or whatever you told his secrets tell yours let your skeletons out the, your skeletons out the closet we don't care about you dating that white man who had a wife well we do care because you're not supposed to date married men it's off fucking limits uh, but again you need to be transparent okay trans because I've never dated a guy who had a wife I dated a guy who had a girlfriend but I was like 18 that's story time for another time anyway so again she's thinking about okay i have to write about me 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 but am i ready for that we do see darla you know sitting with her sponsor getting that letter that her mother was speaking about um to basically say how good she's doing with her recovery and how she has a support system within her sponsor and her sponsor realizes you know she's like you know, my sister went through a custody battle and it was very very hard and i understand what you're going through so when things get tough don't you know don't hesitate to contact me so that we can make sure that you stay on track and she brings up how you know i just don't know if you know um this is the right thing way to do things like i will fight to the ends of the earth for blue but i don't want to have rob angel hate me and i don't want to have blue resent me if this gets too messy and you know things come out or whatever i don't want those to happen even though I, again i will fight to the ends of the world and the thing with darla is <sighs> she wants time with blue but her and Ross still so pissed at each other for her betrayal they're not willing to compromise. I hope y'all was able to hear me with my microphone sitting weird. Um, they have not been able to compromise. That's better. They haven't been able to compromise yet because they're still so upset with each other. And they're not talking to each other yet. They're talking at each other. Like, I need to see him. What, what You know, it's like an at kind of, like you say something and you don't really care what they say back. You just like, I said something, 
and it should be what it is. And then, like, we got this, I'm too. And it's a talking at, not to each other. So, you know, we see that she's having, again, second thoughts about how she's going about this situation with Ra and Blue. Um, we do see Nova and Micah have a conversation. Basically, he tells her how, you know, I'm, I, I can't be like you or whatever because she's like more of an activist. And she says, I don't need you to be like me. Okay, it's not even about that. But what y'all did, you know what I'm saying, was kind of crazy. And she's giving him life, life lessons um, about doing something without thought is what I got from the, con the conversation that she had. Because he keeps saying how, oh, because she's like, you know, the whole, the house burned down the slave house and it was like you know that was an effect or that was the result of what y'all did and then he keeps saying well you know it was an accident that we didn't mean for it to happen it was an accident and she's like no it was a mistake it wasn't an accident meaning you did something you, you made a mistake and then something happened you know she says how you know you can't control the results of what your actions do again because if you light a match somewhere you you can't control when that flame burns you can't control what it burns down you may only light a match to, to light a candle but however you lit, lit the match that lit the candle that burned the whole damn house down so your action had a reaction and had a whole result and the result was the whole damn house burned down. Um, she tells him how, you know, y'all were upset because y'all felt like people were coming there and like mocking and making fun of it. However, slaves lived in those houses and their spirits and their their auras are still there. And when you go in there, when you're, when you're seriously going down there to learn, you can feel their spirit still there. You can feel what happened there when you're there to take it seriously burning it down that won't change that you know what i'm saying you you get that you don't want them to make money off of our ancestors but however it also helps um educate people too so you know she just kind of gave him a different perspective of things and then you know because he kept saying like, well you know well it was this and well we tried to do this and we'll try to do that and she like nah bro you know what i'm saying Again, you can't control the result of your action. Okay, y'all did, y'all made a mistake. It was, you know, it, it might not have been on purpose, but it was a mistake nonetheless. So, um, she lets them know, like, if y'all want to do something, you know, if y'all want to make change, y'all need to organize, organize, I thought Jesus, y'all need to organize, um, and do it that way versus just having an idea and then just going to do something without thinking it all the way through. You're not organized with it. And I'm like, that is very, very true, Nova. So, you know, I felt like he thought he would go to Nova and she was saying, you should have went there and did that. You should have put the blood down. You should have did this. Yes, yes, yes. And she's like, no, no, no. You know what I'm saying? Y'all had the right idea to do something. But what y'all did was a complete mistake. Um, and she was calmly talking to him and giving him words that he could hear. So that he can realize, no, bro, you made a whole mistake. A whole mistake that now has someone locked up based on all of y'all issues. She then brings up, I was like, I got somebody locked up too sweet. Um because i sold weed i was selling weed you know what i'm saying weed selling weed is illegal he then said but it's just weed she said but it's illegal and because i sold someone weed they sold it to someone else who then went to jail for having the weed that i sold someone else so in in hindsight it's my fault so and so got arrested because he was caught with weed i sold and i was like well that's the way to look at it you know it's, you know what I'm saying? it's very very true so um she just brings up how the execution of what they did was bad. You know what I'm saying? You didn't, yeah, you just didn't do it right at all. Um, and then she even brings it, cause she's like, I, we, I want to fix it or whatever. And like, Micah wants to like go to jail for it. I don't know why at all. I just need to fix it. I just need, you know, no, bro. And she said, if you want to help, do it from the outside. Okay. Cause you can't help him if you're in prison with him. Okay. You have no power when you're in the jail. When you're in the jail, you're at the mercy of the court, the judges, the, the correctional officers, the other inmates. And Micah, you barely lasted one day in jail at the, at the, at the little, the little precinct or whatever. You won't last in prison, bro, at all. So he takes in what she says because what she said made complete sense. So we do see Ra and Darla at mediation and um they're bringing up how you know ralph has a good family you know what i'm saying he does work or whatever and when he is at work how his you know aunt uh, Vi has blue and how she's a great great aunt and how she helped raise him when his mother passed away so you know they're putting this whole case together how he works hard he was already put up for early release for his parole you know he's just a good upstanding citizen or whatever and it's a great thing and don't know i'm gonna say i mean you know, the lawyer said you know we asked 
for a 70 30 split, but you know, he denied it. And then Rod Laurie said, Yeah, because we're going for full custody. Darla was like, What? What? Again, Darla did not know that's what he wanted, but I feel like Rod said, Fuck you, mean you want to try to take him away from Ra is trying just hard to hold on to Blue as much as he can because he feel like now that I know he ain't mad, they want to take him from me, and I don't like it. You know what I'm saying? I don't like it at all. That's my son. Don't try to take him from me. So, you know what I'm saying? You want 730? No, I want 100. Okay, I want 100 percent, and you can see him on weekends, maybe on Tuesdays. That's about it. So, Darla, of course, is shocked, shocked, shocked. We see that whole thing. Um, we see a scene that kind of pissed me off. And I'm confused if someone got played. So we see Charlie meeting with Sam's sister, who they're supposed to be working against Sam to close down the vote for the prison. So she's like, yeah, you know, he, my, he's been asking me stuff or whatever. He has no idea what's going on. He's always kind of ignored me or whatever. Even though I watched, you know, from my, when my daddy gave him the land and gave him more majority share, I watched all these things and stayed quiet trying to be a good daughter and trying to forever, you know what I'm saying, um, make my father proud of me by being a good daughter. And as she talking, I'm like, is she saying all this because she sold her out? Like, what's going on? Because why does she keep bringing up how she's trying to be a good daughter? when she knew her father kind of favored the son. So like, you can't be a good daughter anymore, but she then says, I'm gonna be a good daughter and keep the integrity of my father's land and we're gonna take my brother down. So they go to the meeting and then they're talking about the prison or whatever. And then she's like, which Charlie then says, well, we have to vote. And he says, we voted three days ago. And she was like, wh her whole face quivered like, Cause like I like I'm out of place. Like I I don't have anything left because I had no idea this was coming. So she she ain't counting this. The sister lo looks a little shocked and she's like, "You can't do this." That's what Charlie says. You can't do this. The bylaw says that the bylaw say I have this in the memo out. You don't get memos. And if you did get the memo, you didn't show up. And if you don't show up, your vote doesn't count. So it is what it is. His sister then gets up and says. I have to go to my office now. And she leaves. I said, bitch, did she play Charlie? Again, I'm like, I think she played. I don't, I think she played Charlie. Because we don't see no other scene with her saying, I didn't know. It's like, it was a formality. And I'm like, this isn't Charlie's pissed, bitch. Oh, she's so upset. She's pissed. The fuck off. Anyway, we see the kid who was arrested. You know, Michael's friend. His mom meets with the rest of them. And she's very upset. Like the police and took my other baby. Now he in jail. He won't eat. He won't do this. He won't do that. And you know the the, the court defender don't give no don't give two shits or whatever. And then she's like, I know y'all be together all the time. So did y'all have anything to do with what happened? First of all, I was upset that she met with them kids asking them that question without their parents present. Okay, you can't ask my child if they did something without me being there. Even though my child is guilty, with, along with your child, your child got caught. And we found out the reason he got caught was because they found the lighter that had his fingerprints on it. And his fingerprints was in the system because a long time ago, he like got caught doing like stealing some stuff, like some little, I remember some, I used to, selling something little, like not nothing bad or whatever, well, still nonetheless. So his prints were in the system. Um, but again, they found his lighter and the lighter had his fingerprints on it. So that's how they ended up knowing it was him that at least lit something. And again, he's in jail and supposedly he, oh, my battery low. And supposedly he hasn't said anything. I go up and charge my phone, charge my iPod to charge in my iPad because stuff is always low around here. Because I'm always recording or taking notes or going live or shopping or doing something. Anyway, so yeah, the kids like, nah, we wasn't with him. She's like, y'all thick as Steve, y'all wasn't with him. And they like, nah. So Michael almost wants to say yes. He then says, ma'am, I'm sorry. We, and the boy was like, yeah, we all sorry, but we wasn't there. And we're going to help raise some money to get him a good lawyer. <laughs> this court defendant don't care. And then Michael says, well, 
excuse me, I talked my aunt Nova, and then she said she can possibly get us a community leader, I mean, lawyer, who can help or whatever, and she's kind of happy about that. But, I mean, this is the thing when, this is the thing that happens when kids do stuff together. If one person gets caught, you're not supposed to snitch, technically. You know, that's the key to, that's, that's what no snitching means. No snitching means if we all committed a crime and you got caught, you shouldn't snitch on us because you got caught. Because technically, you did it too. And it's not as if he's going to jail for something that he had nothing to do with. You know what I'm saying? Like, if he had nothing to do with it and he knew they did, I'm telling. I ain't going to jail for y'all. But he was guilty in it too. So, you know... All of them going to jail would not help. But hopefully if they're on the outside trying to help get him out and prove he really didn't do it. Or that he maybe someone took it. I don't know. Some kind of way. I don't know. This is kind of hard to, you know, say they all need to go to jail. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Anyway, um, we do see Nova who goes to see Too Sweet. You know what? If you have been watching this long, I have not forgot about the codes. But sometimes, because I just be going and going and going, I forget to say it in the middle of a video. So, if you have been um, watching this long, the code is kimono, uh, capris, sandals, or tank top. Okay? Um, so, pick one of those and then put in the last three letters of your last name okay so i will pick kimono okay and then the last three letters for me would be s-o-n so yeah um so nova goes to see too sweet because too sweet now was he's do, doing good in school he's working at the library he's he's on a whole great path now that he's out of jail and everything. So she basically goes to him to tell him, you know what I'm saying, she felt as if it was his fault. It was it was her fault that he got arrested. She explained, like, the weed that you got caught with, that you bought from so-and-so, I gave it, or I sold it to so-and-so, so it was my weed that you end up going to jail for. And he did not know. But he tells her, like, I don't blame you. Like, it wasn't your fault. And I'm like, it really wasn't. You didn't force him to buy that weed. And if old boy didn't either weave you, he would have got it from someone else. Um, at least you helped him get out. So that's a good thing, too. And he said, you know, me going to jail reminded me to never do anything again to get myself arrested. So it was a wake-up call for me. Sometimes people need a wake-up call um, to know, hey, I got to sit the fuck down somewhere before I, go, before I be in prison or dead. So um, he does tell her, like, you know, you helped me so much, you know, just overall. So I'm so grateful for you. And he then tells her, like, you need to write your own story when she brings up how she's writing a book. And then he says, you know, you have a great story to tell, tell your own story. So we do see her getting inspired by hearing them words for him and how he did not blame her. And she gets to type and type and type it. That's a good thing. So sure enough, what do we sue? What do we sue? What do we see? Charlie did call Davis. And he like, but I don't know why because he ain't listening to me. He won't take my phone calls. He won't respond to my text messages. He is pissed, pissed, pissed off at me. She's like, look. I need you to try to get through to him because he ain't listening to me either at this point in time. And I need you to let him know that because you've made serious mistakes. So I need you to let him know that some things cannot be undone and some things are very, very serious. And I'm like, that's a good point. Because he went out there with cheating, 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 had kids, had a whole baby on her, whatever. And he can't take any of that back. And those choices he made fucked up their family life. So, you know, he can speak from experience. So... David trying to talk to Michael, and Michael being a typical ass, so he's being Tariq, if you ask me. Um, I don't, who wants to talk to you, you know what I'm saying? You make mom, you know, you was mom's worst. He said you, you was her worst mistake, or, she, or you give her the most headache, or something like that. Somehow you just, basically you was a piece of shit, daddy. Um, and then David was just honest. And so I like, look, I know what I did was wrong. I know how much I hurt you, I hurt your mom, but that was never my intention. And, well, you're just a horrible person. He's like, you know, Mike, are you trying to, like, go to prison or go to jail or do things so that you won't be like me? He's like, no. I'm like, okay, that's the old Michael. Okay, that's the old, old little scary Michael voice. And he, he, he just, he's honest. He says, you know, the whole thing with him going to jail before, he felt powerless. You know, he felt the need to take his power back in one way or the other. And so he felt like he could do something 
and that's what made him no longer feel powerless um in different in, in his life or whatever he says i did everything that i thought was you know the thing to do and then it just turned out wrong and i just want to fix it and he's like now you're sitting here you know laughing at me they was like i'm not i'm not laughing at you like you know what i'm saying i'm proud that you want to make a change i'm just not proud about what you did because what you did was wrong but i'm proud that you wanted to do something you just went about it the complete wrong way he said you know you just have to think before you act but even though even in that i'm always here for you i'm like okay i like i'm getting back on track because they was a piece of shit we know that he's a bad husband he's a cheater or whatever um and he's made very bad decisions but when he has to come through to talk to micah i do like how he does it from a father perspective so um micah's like you know what i just i just want to fix it and he's like micah you can't fix this you know you can't fix it you know what i'm saying he's like but you know um i just need you to not make it worse and I'm like, that's the perfect advice. Like, you can't fix it. And I need you to accept the one, you can't fix it, but you also can't be trying to make it worse by doing dumb stuff too, by trying to fix it. Okay, you can't do both, bruh. It's not how anything goes. So they had that whole conversation, and it seems as if Davis and Micah are not in a better place. So when he goes downstairs, he sees Charlie. Charlie in the kitchen, like, scrubbing away. Just she's scrubbing the damn kitchen counter and he looks at her like that's how she acts when she's nervous and she's just doesn't know what to do she cleans 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 and she's like what's okay what happened is he okay what's going on and he's like you know it's gonna be okay he's gonna be okay and then she has like a little like a little weight lifts off her shoulder whatever and then he hugs her she hugs him and not even in a weird you know what i'm saying you my cheating ass ex-husband way and i'm hugging you because we should be together this thing of you are still the father of my child and in this situation you helped our family okay you you helped take a a, a weight off my shoulder and i'm appreciative of that so we see that whole thing. Um, we do see um, back with Darla and Rye. They still in, they only in mediation. They're not even in court. They're in mediation, okay? And it's a, it's a whole battle. And it's more of a battle between Rye and Darla Mama, okay? Darla ain't said much of shit besides, are you serious? When they said that they was going for full custody. You know, the mama like, you know what I'm saying? He's not even, he may not even be Blue's real daddy. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got no money. Because when she said, you know, you, you're economically un, unfit. She mean you don't have any money. Um, You're not good for Blue. The lawyer says how, you know, even Blue has said that he wants to stay with Darla. And <laughs> Ross said, because they keep dangling all that new stuff. They keep dangling, you know, new stuff in front of him. So, of course, he wants the, those new things. And then... He was honest. He was honest and said, you know what I'm saying? All I want is to be a daddy to that boy. All I want is to be a daddy. And what do y'all want from me? My name on the birth certificate, you know what I'm saying? Um, you have been in out his life and I've been there this whole time just trying to be the daddy. Her mama then like, you know what I'm saying? You ain't good for him. You know what I'm saying? My daughter needs my daughter needs full custody. You know what I'm saying? He has men and women all up and through the house or whatever. He's this is bad influences. He's on par I'm like, darling, mama, out here acting like she fucking rock. I'm like, what's going on, girl? Calm the hell down. Now, she says, take the test, okay? Take the test because he's, he's we don't even know if he's Blue's father. And then Darla says, Mom, stop. I'm not going to allow you to do this to the father of my son. And I said, finally, Darla, finally, it has happened to me. You know what I'm saying? She finally says something that she should have said before. Well, her mama called the people is when she should have just shut all this shit down. But she just had to find the right time to use her voice. Rod then says, I already took the test. I took the test already, and he ain't mad. But that don't matter. My name on the birth certificate, I looked it up. I know my rights. And y'all cannot just take him from me, okay? You cannot take him from me. Darla then realized, damn, he knew Blue wasn't his. And he's still here fighting me tooth and nails for a son that isn't even his. Whereas before, Darla assumed he never he, that he still just thought Blue was his and just didn't want He like, no, I took the test and I still am as committed as I was before. <laughs> damn it. And now I'm like, I think that's what made her realize I was completely wrong. Like, he's just as vested in this boy as I am because he is our son, point blank, to the period. Okay? 
So we didn't see them. The next thing we see is Darla and her mama at Darla's house. And her mom's like, you know, it's, it's just hard for me to hear everything you told me about him and what has happened and what he did to you and you know what I'm saying how you just are hurt heartbroken or whatever and for me to not do anything I have to protect you I'm, I'm your mother and I'm like but what did he do she lied to him about blue being his and she told him before their wedding and he was pissed okay um he even said in the court, you know what I'm saying, even after everything she did to me, when she tore my heart into pieces, I still want to be a, a father to that boy. Like, he's my son, regardless. And I think that's what made Donna realize she was doing the, even the thing that she was telling her mama wasn't right. Because when the mama said, you know, all oh, the women, I'm like, what women? Donna only seen one woman. He's seen one. She seen one girl And I'm like he then broke up with that girl Because your ass was fucking with him Girl look I just can't You know Donna said hey, look I think we need to do this our way You know me and Rod needs to handle this And fix this together She said because at the end of the day Ralph Angel is Blue's father Regardless of what the, bl the blood that runs with veins And I'm like finally Finally that's a little bit of the old Donna who know me and him have to work it out some kind of way without all the other people being involved. And so we do see her mama hug and the mama leaves. Mama, go back to D.C. Okay. Um, the ending scene we see is Charlie standing in, you know, at the door of Micah's room. And Micah's in the bed, his eyes open. He's woke, okay? He's working. He's, he's woke and he's nervous. So she can see... She's just looking at her son. She's she's looking at her son and she's just she's also nervous. So when she walks in, she gets in his bed, he closes his eyes as if he sleep. Girl, he, I mean boy, he knows she know you're not asleep. And so she just kind of lays next to him and just looks at him. And she just is looking at her son. And then he said with his eyes closed, um, I messed up. And he's crying. And she just hugs her son. And she cries with him. And I cried too. And then it goes off. So it was a really, really good episode, people. It was a really, really good episode. You know what I'm saying? It kind of come full circle. I do feel like it's the start of a beginning. Um, and I'm very, very excited. We have about three more episodes till the season ends. The last episode of the season will be an hour and a half. Oh, baby. Let's see how this one go. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. I am Jaylee. This is Jaylee's Corner. Peace.